The Great Nuts Flake Program, coming to you from the United States Marine Base at Camp Elliott near San Diego, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Friends, when a homemaker dreams up a luncheon or a dinner, notice the accent on flavor. But when the same homemaker thinks about breakfast, she often falls back on a plain humdrum sort of a dish. Now, that's being unfair to family. Because flavor counts at breakfast, too. And that's when a bowl full of multi-rich grape nut flakes calls forth a round of applause. Because grape nut flakes bring you the rich nut-sweet goodness of delicious grape nuts themselves in crisp, toasty brown flake form. A flavor now in its second generation of popularity. A flavor that's truly outstanding because it's a two-grain blend of sun-ripened wheat and malted barley, carefully combined and delicately toasted. A flavor that explains why Grape Nuts Flakes are America's fastest-growing cereal. So to start your day with a happy grin, the answer is Grape Nuts Flakes often at breakfast. Ask for the big, thrifty 12-ounce package of Grape Nuts Flakes. Call out the Marines, played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, since we're broadcasting from Camp Elliott, which is a Marine base, we bring you a man who goes with a girl named Marine and can't get to first base, Jack Benny. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, <laughs> Thank you. Great nut flakes again. This is Jack Benny speaking. And Don, I don't get the connection. Here we are visiting the Marines at Camp Elliott, and you have to drag my girl into us. What's that for? Well, after all, Jack, your girl's name is Marine. That's right. Marine Strudelhaven. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you... But, but what, what do you mean I can't get to first base with her? Why, the girl's nuts about me. Well, when I saw you at the movies the other night, she was way down in front, and you were sitting upstairs in the loge just smoking. All right, so I was smoking. Well, if she's so nuts about you, why weren't you sitting together? For the simple reason that I only had one cigar. <laughs> anyway, how, how did you know that Maureen was in the theater? Why, everybody knew it. She kept yelling at you all through the picture. Well, she didn't understand the plot. <laughs> I don't see why either. She's in pictures herself, you know. Uh, what was that? Oh, hello, Mary. Hello. What was that about Marine Strudelhaven? I just said that she's in the movie. She works in a shipyard. <laughs> she does not. I wish I had a nickel for every rivet she's caught in her bucket. <laughs> all right, all right. It's patriotic for women to do work like that nowadays. But she's... But she's, uh... <laughs> anyway, she's, she's a beautiful girl and very feminine. Feminine? She's got a rattlesnake tattooed on her right arm. Well, if you look close, that rattlesnake has a rose in its mouth. <laughs> it's a two-color job. I held her hand while she got the needle. <laughs> anyway, the girl is crazy about me. Did you see those novel cufflinks she gave me for a present? Novel is right. She bit them out of a lead pipe. <laughs> All I know is they hold my cuffs together beautifully. They're a little heavy, though. I have an awful time waving at people, you know? <laughs> oh, hello, Phil. Hey, Jackson, I tried to get a hold of you last night. Me and the boys had a big Halloween party at the Del Mar Hotel. Yes, I know, and what a racket. Kept me up all night. Oh, are you staying at the Del Mar? No, I'm at the U.S. Grant in San Diego. <laughs> and my windows were closed. Halloween party, huh, Phil? Was it the costume affair? Sure, all that stuff. My drummer was dressed up like a little Bo Peep, 
My brass section was the seven dwarfs, and Frankie, my guitar player, came as the pie-eyed piper. <laughs> pie-eyed? That's the pied piper. Jackson, he was blind. <laughs> hmm, a costume party. What, uh, what outfit did you have on, Phil? Oh, I was all knocked out, Jackson. I let my hair down and came as Lady Godiva. <laughs> that I don't believe. Were there any other clever costumes? Yeah, about 4 a.m., one of the boys came in all dressed up like a policeman. Well. But he was a real cop, and ding, ding, off we went. <laughs> well, that's a typical Harris party. Everything from hors d'oeuvres to a paddy wagon. Yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Benny, speaking of Phil's Halloween party, I had a... Oh, uh, oh, hello, Dennis. Who, me? <laughs> yes, you. Hello. Oh. Hey, Mr. Benny, speaking of Phil's Halloween party... How, uh, how do you feel, kid? Oh, I'm fine now. Good. Things look pretty blue early in the week, but I unloosened my collar. <laughs> well, that'll do it every time. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Benny, speaking of Phil's Halloween party, I had a swell costume. I borrowed a uniform from one of the bellboys at the hotel. Oh, dressed as a bellboy, eh? Did you have fun? Gosh, no. I ran so many errands, I never did get to the party. Well, that's too bad. But I made $8 in tips. That sure beats singing on the radio. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Dennis. What I give you amounts to more than $8 a week. You get a small fortune. Yeah, stock in an oil well. <laughs> Never mind. If your backyard is dry, I'm hooked. <laughs> Dennis, believe me, I expect to strike a gusher any day now. Oh, boy. Well. I mean it. And now, Dennis, how about a little song? Okay. Hold it, kid. Say, Jackson, if you don't mind, I've been rehearsing an awful cute song, and I'd like to do it right now. What's the name of it, Phil? I like to neck with a chicken. <laughs> That's... That's I get the neck of the chicken. I've heard it, and it's a swell number. I'll tell you what. You sing it, and I'll accompany you on the violin. What do you say, Phil? Jackson, you pull a horsehair over that cat gut, and there won't be a Marine left in the building. <laughs> okay, okay, if that's your attitude, go ahead and sing. Some people just can't stand competition. <laughs> You know, there's always one in every family, a square, a jerk, you know, that nobody cares a bit. Well, there's always one in every family. And in my family, I'm in. I get the neck of that chicken. I get the burnt piece of toast. I get the seat in the movie. Smack a win back of a boat. When I jump in my shower each morn, sure it fades, I'm too late. And that hot water is gone I get the neck of the chicken I get the plate with the crack I get those evenings with grandma Everyone else can relax That's why I can't get over this dream that came through If I get the neck of the chicken Well, how did I ever get you? Yes, I get the neck of that chicken Seems like I'm under a curse I get the neck of the chicken, sometimes I get the reverse. That's why I can't get over this dream that came through. If I get the neck of that yard bird, then how did I ever get you? That was, uh, that was I Get the Neck of the Chicken with a vocal chorus by Phil Harris, our Kentucky bourbon baritone. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, very, very good, Phil. Thanks, Jim, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that song. You did a great job. I could sing better than that with one tonto. <laughs> Dennis, what's that for? Well, I'm supposed to do the singing around here. But, kid, you can't lick me. I'm a big oil man. <laughs> Who's kicking you around? You're going to sing later. Oh. But Phil sang very well. The least you can do is give him credit for it. 
If there's anything I hate, it's a ham. And now, folks... Look who's talking. <laughs> you behave yourself. And now, folks... No use waiting. I gotta slug that kid. <laughs> and now, folks, Miss Mary Livingston, that eminent American poetess, <laughs> has written another of her famous... Pardon me. Come in. Well, 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 it's a, it's a Marine. Uh, don't you recognize him, Jack? Recognize him? Well, I'll be darned. Hello, stranger. Clap or not? <laughs> well, 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 this is a surprise. So you're a Marine now, eh, Schlepperman? Uh, look at my neck. It's genuine leather. <laughs> Well, you do look rough and ready. Uh, how long you been in, Schlepp? Seven weeks. And Jackie, I'm so tough I could lick my waist in wild kittens. <laughs> That's wild cat. Don't rush me. <laughs> Save old Schlepperman. Say, Schlepp, you ought to make a good Marine at that. Remember all the fights you used to have with your wife? You mean that red-headed commander? <laughs> Well, she did have a pretty hot temper, and she sure used to kick you around. You said it. After 12 years with her, boot camp was a pleasure. <laughs> well, that's putting it pretty strong, but I guess you know what you're talking about. Where are you going, Clep? Well, I gotta run along now, Jackie. It's time for bayonet practice. Oh, do you have bayonet practice on Sunday? No, but we're having roast beef for supper, and I want to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, so long, Slip. So long, Jackie. From the halls of Monster's room to the shores of Smithville. <laughs> ah, what a guy. It was good to see Slip again. And now, folks, say, where were we anyway? Uh, it's time for my poem. Oh, yes. And now, folks, since November 10th is the 167th anniversary of the United States Marines, Mary Livingston has written another of her... This looks like lousy. It must mean lovely, <laughs> I think. Lovely poem. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the title of it, Mary? Uh, to the Marines, and I don't mean Strudelhaven. Leave her out of it. Go ahead. <coughs> On November 10th, long, long ago, the Marines were founded, as you know. They fight one war and then another. And when things get dull, they fight each other. <laughs> you said it. The Marines you'll find on land and ocean, their hands ain't soft from lilac lotion. Of course not. Their skin is tough, it is not silky, and they travel around like Mrs. Roosevelt. <laughs> that... Mary, that doesn't rhyme. Oh, oh pardon me. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. <laughs> their skin is tough, it is not silky, and they travel around like Wendell Welty. That's just... <laughs> That's better. Now, read the, uh, read the last verse. Uh. So here's to you, old Leatherneck, from Portland, Maine, to Houston, Texas. When you get through with all those gaps, where they had teeth, there'll be just gaps. The end. <laughs> very, very, very good, Mary. That was swell. I could write a better poem than that with one tonsil. <laughs> Dennis. I've had enough of him. Hold my coat, Jack. Mary, I'm surprised at you. Let her come. I'm ready. <laughs> Why, Mr. Day. Well, this is the only minstrel show I ever saw in Whiteface. You're right. How do we get into that? Now, fellas. I said something about one tonsil, remember? Hmm. And I have to be in the oil business with a dodo like that. <laughs> oh, well. Now, fellas, I've got something very, very important to do. So if you don't mind, I'm going to let you handle the rest of the program and run along. Where are you going, Jackson? Well, it's a lovely afternoon, so I thought I'd go down to the rifle range and do a little shooting. Uh, General Smith uh, said I could. No kidding. It is okay with Smitty? Mary, please. <laughs> well, see you later, fellas. Oh, and when Rochester brings my rifle, tell him I'll be over at the range waiting for him. Hey, wait a minute, Jackson. I'll go with you. I'd like to do a little shooting myself. I want to come along, too. I'm sorry, Mary, but I'm not taking you out on that range. You will have to stay here. You let me come or I'll tell all these fellas that you try to join the waves. 
I did not. It's a fine answer. I wish my writers would think of me once in a while. Huh? But come on, if you insist. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. <laughs> Oh, hello, Rochester. Where are you? I'm still at the U.S. Grant in San Diego. What? You were supposed to be here half an hour ago with my gun. That's what I called you about, boss. I had a little trouble with it. What trouble? I was checking to see if it was loaded. And you know that big chandelier in your bedroom where we hung the laundry? <laughs> yes? Well, you can get into your socks from any angle now. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. You mean to say you shot a hole right through my socks? Not only that, I riveted your BBDs to the ceiling. <laughs> well, that's the most careless thing I ever heard of. Now, listen, Rochester, jump in a cab and get over here with my gun. Okay, but a cab clear out there will cost a lot of money, boss. All right, you pay the cab driver, bring me the slip, and I'll pay you. It's very simple. Sounds that way, don't it? <laughs> You get over here. Now, goodbye. See you in a little while, boss. Hmm. My underwear on the ceiling. Well, it's my fault. I should have worn it. <laughs> well, come on, Mary and Phil. Let's get over at the rifle range. So long, Don. So long, Jack. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before Dennis Day does a number for us, I'd like to remind you that America's most distinctive flake cereal in the big 12-ounce economy size package... Hurry it up, Tubby. I got my mouth open. <laughs> Quiet, kid. In the big 12-ounce economy size package are those toasty, brown, sweet-as-a-nut grapes nuts flakes. Ooh, what he said. <laughs> All right, grape nuts flakes. Sing, Dennis. dream 
Right this way, Mary, Phil. I think the rifle range is over there by, behind these barracks. Hey, Jackson, let's get a little excitement into this. Now, I'll bet you five bucks I hit the target more times than you do. That's a bet, brother. Mary, you hold the money. Okay. Here, Mary, here's my dough. Good, let's go. <laughs> well, where's your five, Jack? You see me every day. I'm certainly good for it. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute, Jackson. I want to see your five bucks right now. I'm not going to take my pants down and my money belt off out here. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to win that bet. There's the range right over there. Oh, just a second, buddy. Where are you going? Oh. Oh, are you the sentry? No, no. I'm just walking up and down here because I'm mad at my feet. <laughs> well, you, you don't have to get huffy about it. Now, whether you like it or not, I'm going out on that rifle range. You take one more step and I'll make Fred Allen happy. <laughs> Now, put down that rifle, please. Now, look, I have permission from General Smith to use the range. And if you don't mind, I... Woo! Woo! Watch that bayonet! <laughs> now, come on, kids. Here's the entrance right here. Gosh, look at all those targets. Where? Where? What targets? You'll have to take my word for it. They're about 100 yards away. <laughs> I can see him. Well, as long as Rochester isn't here yet with my gun, I might as well take one out of this rack. This is a good one. Just a minute, Great Sock. What are you doing with that rifle? <laughs> I, uh, I have permission to do some target practice, Sergeant. I'm aiming it. Well, turn it around unless you want three nostrils. <laughs> Well, go ahead, Phil. You shoot twice, and I'll shoot twice. And remember, this is for five bucks. Okay, Jackson. Now, look, I'm aiming at that center target. Here goes. Whoops, pardon me, Phil. Ha, ha, ha. You missed it a mile. I missed it because you shoved me. I stumbled a little. Be a sport. <laughs> now, try your second shot. Okay. Here goes. How do you like that? A bullseye. Hmm. Five bucks shot the... Oh, well. <laughs> Mary, where are you going with that gun? I want to see if I can hit one of the targets. Those things are dangerous. Put it down. Oh, let me try it anyway. Okay. Stand back, everybody. You know how women are. Quiet. Hmm. Hmm. Ha, <laughs> ha, you missed it. <laughs> I'll be a hmm, three bullseye. That's right. The little lady has a perfect score. Would you like this hand-painted ashtray, miss, or the Popeye doll? <laughs> well, Phil, I, I guess Rochester isn't going to get here, so let's get back to the mess hall. Hold it, Jackson. You bet me five bucks, and you're going to shoot right now. All right. I just don't like to shoot without my own gun, that's all. Well, I think I'll try for that brown target over there. That's the sentry that just stopped us. <laughs> oh, yes, he's tying his shoelace. <laughs> yeah, I can't... I can't get... I can't get used to this... I can't get used to this strange rifle. Come on, come on, Jackson, quit stalling. Okay, here goes. <laughs> hmm. What happened? What did I hit? A gopher with a monocle. <laughs> My, they're ritzy here, aren't they? Huh? You want to aim a little higher, blue eyes. <laughs> I can't. These cufflinks are holding me down. But I'll try. Here goes. Oh, my goodness. Jeepers, he shot a flock of ducks. Well, I'll be darned. Hey, Jackson, here comes Rochester. It's about time. I'm over here, Rochester. Oh, yes, here's your gun, boss. Thanks. Say, Jack, what's that little piece of rock sticking up there by the trigger? That's the flint. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
What do you think it is? Flint? Is it a cigarette lighter? No, it's a gun. You see, this little hammer hits the flint, makes a spark, and the, and the gun goes off. Believe me, I'm going to show you some real shooting. With a gun that old, you ought to be shooting Indians. <laughs> no, this gun isn't so old. Look at the initials on the barrel. D.B. Daniel Boone. <laughs> that D.B. stands for Dead Eye Benny, my uncle. <laughs> Now, uh, hand me my powder horn, Rochester. Okay, here you are, boss. Stand back, everybody. Be careful, Jackson. That thing must pack a terrific wallet. I know how to handle it. Notice how I'm bracing myself. Four! Four! You're not playing golf. Out of the way, everybody. I'm going to hit that old bullseye. <laughs> Ooh. What happened? Did I hit it? No, and get up off the ground. <laughs> Darn it, I must have put in too much powder. Pick up my hat, Rochester. Here you are, boss. Thanks. And my glasses. Oh, Phil, reach over there and pick up my gun, will you? Okay, here you are, Jackson. Catch! Don't throw it! <laughs> Darn you, Phil Harris! <laughs> get my glasses again, Rochester. <laughs> and my hat. Say, fellas, I got a better idea. Instead of shooting at the target... <laughs> instead of shooting at the target, why don't I put a tin can on Rochester's head and shoot that off? You want to shoot a tin can off my head? Yes, didn't you ever hear of William Tell's son that put an apple on his head? Yeah, whatever become of him? <laughs> he become famous. Now put this can on your head and march 10 yards down the field. Uh-huh. And when you get there, turn around and stand still. Uh-huh. Now, you aren't afraid, are you? Boss, I ain't afraid of nothing I ain't gonna do. <laughs> There's nothing to get panicky about. I have a very good aim. Good aim? Yes. Don't tell me those ducks laying there had motor trouble. <laughs> now, stop arguing and get out on that field. Further. A little more now. There. And now, folks, Daniel Boone will perform one of his famous tricks. I'm not Daniel Boone. Then why are you wearing that coonskin cap? It came with a gun. It's an ensemble. <laughs> now, here goes. Rochester, brace yourself. <laughs> Rochester, did I hit the can? Rochester, Rochester, stop. Rochester, what are you running for? I got to keep ahead of that bullet, don't I? <laughs> Well, that's enough shooting for today. Let's go back, kids. Pick up my hat, Mary. And my glasses. And my tie. How did that get off? I don't know. Friends, we're all eating less meat these days because the government has asked us to share meat with our fighting men and our allies. But the country needs every one of us fit and strong for our jobs on the home front. That's why the government has also asked us to eat more of the other nutritious foods of which we have plenty. For instance, Use more whole grain cereals and more wholesome, nourishing milk. For whole grain cereals, like grape nuts flakes, are plentiful, nutritious, and thrifty, too. In every helping of toasty brown grape nuts flakes and milk, you get nourishment you need, protein and minerals and vitamins. Yes, grape nuts flakes provide whole grain levels of two important B vitamins, niacin to help prevent loss of appetite and weight, plus vitamin B1, the nerve and energy vitamin. So to help keep up to par these days, eat a big bowl of delicious, malty-rich grape nuts, flakes, and milk every morning. Friends, for hot breakfast with more smiles per mouthful, serve your folks delicious hot grape nuts wheat meal. It's extra delicious. It's extra nutritious. It cooks extra fast. Grape nuts wheat meal has the rich goodness of roasted wheat, plus all the essential food values of the whole grain, including iron, niacin, and extra vitamin B1. And hot brown grape nuts wheat meal cooks to delicious perfection in three minutes flat. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.